Hi guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube. My name is Daniel Rosal. This YouTube channel covers uh, my various tech interests and today we're going to delve into what I think is actually a really interesting topic for people interested in better uh, home internet connectivity, particularly when you find yourself in that frustrating situation where you're moving to a new apartment or office premises and you only have kind of suboptimal internet service providers available like there might be DSL and there might be uh, coaxial and a lot of people I've done some videos before on both connection bonding and load balancing and from the comments I get on those videos a lot of people are confused as to uh, what either does and what the difference is. So I created this presentation um, in order to try to bring a bit of clarity into this. So here's not a real comment I got, but this is what a lot of people want to know. So very common use case. I have two pretty bad ISPs. Uh, this is a frequent issue in uh, the country I live in. Serving my home slash business. Is there any way that I can combine them into one fast internet connection? Sometimes I call this mushing. Can you mush together two internet connections to make one internet connection? Here's what actually got me interested in connection bonding. This was a real scenario. This little avatar guy represents me two years ago on the Amtrak. Can I combine the lousy public Wi-Fi on this train with the connectivity on my cell phone to get a better internet connection? And this is actually, as I said, what led me to connection bonding. This is actually maybe not the greatest example because you have to think intelligently when you're doing stuff like connection bonding. And there is a very high chance that the public Wi-Fi on something like a train or a bus is the same connectivity as you're getting through your phone. And that kind of connecting two networks of the same bandwidth and speed won't necessarily improve your connectivity at all so if it's the same connection you won't get uh, as well other benefits of connection bonding like instant failover but you know theoretically you might have we might jazz up this scenario a bit to say it's a you're on something like a ship with a starlink or something like satellite connectivity and you have a, a cellular connection could you use them together in reality the ship probably bonds its own internet but uh, this at least uh, can get people thinking about is this kind of tech out there? And the answer is that it is and it's not super well known. So uh, that's why I think it's interesting to talk about it. So the answer to both of these use cases would be connection bonding would be a, would if it can help. Uh, this is what you need and not load balancing, right? The guy on the bus who's thinking, can I use the public Wi-Fi plus a cell phone one? Or the guy who says, um, I'm in the more common scenario by which there are only two undesirable internet connections in my locality. Is there any way that I can sort of combine those two into one? Okay, so let's now look at load balancing and then we'll understand why it doesn't do essentially the main thing the connection bonding can do. And we're talking about load balancing in server land. Load balancing is a very big concept in cloud computing. And when we're talking about load balancing there, we're looking at it in 180 degrees uh, distance or flipped over. We're looking at balancing traffic coming into a website and splitting that to um, different servers serving that website. So we're actually looking at it the other way around here, which is why I specified this is in the home or business networking context that we're talking about load balancing. So uh, one, I would give a home networking definition of load balancing as well. It involves installing an intermediate piece of hardware on the network and that piece of hardware can be a router or will be a router. It's going to be connecting to multiple WANs or internet connectivity sources, wide area networks, and it's going to route that traffic intelligently between clients. So just to uh, sort of uh, diagram this, here's an example of a uh, wired router that can do load balancing, although pretty much I think you'll find any wired uh, router on the market will have this as a feature. I use the TP-Link ER605 on my home network. And an example would be we have two internet connections coming in. Let's say we have a fiber optic line and a DSL. And obviously we're not showing the modems, but they would be part of this network design too. So these guys would be hooked up to the load balancer and that's on the WAN side. And then on the LAN side, on our local network side, we might have, if we're just running a wired network going directly to different desktop computers and uh, I added phones just to kind of, you know, uh, VOIP phones and we might have an access point there and then 
the access point will be spitting out wireless and that'll be connecting to different guys. So this might seem super complicated, but it's a kind of standard, pretty standard enterprise network design. And what we can do with this load balancer here is we can intelligently decide which of the clients, the phone or the desktop or the AP, who's getting internet from where, which one's pulling from fiber optic, which one's pulling from DSL. So use cases for load balancing might be one of them is uh, redundancy, failover. If WAN 1 is down, let's switch over to WAN 2 or WAN 3. If we have, uh, and you will find uh, load balancers that can take, you know, a bunch of different WANs, although two is pretty common um, because, you know, if you have two very different WANs, it's pretty unlikely they're all going to go down at the same time. But, you know, 90, 99.99959 situations, uh, uptime guarantee situations, you might need more than two WANs. Intelligent optimization of bandwidth. So let's go back to the diagram for a second. And another thing you could use load balancing for in the local network is to say we don't want to clog up either of our two lines, the DSL line or the fiber optic line, by all the traffic going through the business. So we might say relatively light packet traffic like VOIP. We're going to put those guys on the less glamorous DSL connection. And we're going to put all our uh, you know servers or stuff doing a lot of uploading on the fiber optic one that's going to have a much better upload, uplink to the internet. And as I kind of just talked about there, assigning different client types to different ones, the VOIP phones on one one, the desktop on ones two. So here's what load balancing, so that's, those are all the kind of cool things you can do with a load balancer, very useful. But here's one, here's the critical thing that you can't do. And that's again, I call this mushing, mushing together different ones to create a single pipe that aggregates the available bandwidth. So something like taking connection one and two and creating a new combined connection that uses various speeds. And that is what connection bonding does. So when people are looking for that kind of, oh, we want to like take together all the internet connections and make one very fast internet connection, that's not really a load balancing feature, that's a connection, connection bonding feature. So as the name suggests, connection bonding creates a bonded connection that really aggregates multiple WANs. But to do that, it's a little bit more complicated than, you know, just sort of mushing together, as I say, different internet connections. You need uh, another type of hardware that's going to uh, send packets out to different uh, wide area network servers. And uh, one other advantage of connection bonding, because the multiple connections are always kind of fused in a sense, is that the failover should be really seamless. An example would be Speedify, uh, which is a consumer solution. They offer uh, connection bonding and um, they one of their selling points is their failover, which is quicker than the kind of failover you'll see on load balancing, which as we see was, was also a feature for that. But the issue with connection bonding is that it sounds beautiful. Let's just take two connections and just kind of plug them in together. But it's not quite that easy to deploy because you generally need something on the one side. So Speedify is a good product. I have no commercial relationship with them other than that I use them. Um, and that is kind of makes it accessible. And they, they deal with all that messy complication of setting up the, uh, splitting the packets up in the wide area network. Uh, but there's also more expensive routers that are used more in the enterprise environment, um, etc. And sometimes you have ISPs that will do connection bonding as well, upstream. So this is a diagram I pulled out from makeuseof.com and kind of showing how it would work in practice. You have your two internet providers, channel bonding client side, you know, you obviously need to uh, have them connected somehow. And then on the server side, splitting up the packets with that device in the on the server side and then putting those out to the different uh, internet providers. So this is the make use of definition. They say channel bonding splits your web traffic at the packet level, so very low level, among multiple internet connections. This means that channel bonding will be effective even for the user trying to stream a large movie because traffic is split at a low level. While load balancing splits your network traffic, splits your network traffic, Channel bonding effectively combines many different internet connections into one. Channel bonding, it may sound very exotic and glam and I was going to say glamorous, uh, exotic is probably a better term, but this has a lot of really useful applications, particularly an ex examples, real life applications would be stuff like emergency dispatch centers where you absolutely need to always have internet. I mentioned again, the kind of 5-9 guarantee. 
A uh, big use case would be broadcast television and internet streamers whereby you are you know, streaming from somewhere remote and you can't just have one connection. Like if you're doing a live news report and you've got one 4G connection that goes down, that's unacceptable. So there's a lot of bonding devices out there uh, designed specifically for this use case. And I mentioned cruise ships. That's a really interesting one. Cruise ships, you know, going out into the middle of the sea and you, they might have sometimes cellular network close to coast, but then only satellite connectivity out to coast. And they, they might want to use everything available to give the best internet connection experience for their passengers. So at the high level differences, uh, load balancing is bandwidth optimization, failover slash redundancy, and uh, being allowing people to deploy more intelligent network architectures. Connection bonding would be improving the network performance by uh, mushing, again, uh, for want of a better word, different internet connections together to offer better speed as well as fail over and redundancy. And I think I've reached the end of my presentation. Hope that was useful. If you've ever wondered what the difference is or were confused about the two, diff the two different types of strategy and thanks for watching and to get more videos about different tech subjects, do please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.